Buck 300, together they form the Red Bull Matadors. Stern barrel roll to the left as the first manoeuvre. Power to weight ratio all important in an aeroplane such as this as they perform the slide, a boot full of rudder, and there to pull through and they'll be pulling up on the B-axis to perform stationed at Wattisham Airfield in Suffolk. This is the Westland Sea King HAR-3A. We see the simulated survivor has already fired his smoke grenade out there on the grass runway and the Sea King will overfly the survivor taking a look at their position before turning into wind and getting ready to perform the rescue. strong crew on board to be given his captaincy in the near future. The seeking descending now and we'll be seeing the winchman being lowered on the cable. The winchman being Sergeant Mark Scotland. He's the newest winchman on the flight with eight months experience. He's a former Chinook helicopter crewman who served in Afghanistan. And operating the winch together with the aircraft radar flight lieutenant. The radar operator acts as the winch operator at the rescue scene. The winchman, meanwhile, is normally trained to paramedic standard and he can supply immediate first aid and recovery services at the rescue site. Survivor, incidentally, is Flight Lieutenant Robin Gould, who's recently completed his elementary RAF flying training and is waiting for his fast jet training course to start. 22 Squadron says that he regularly acts as a survivor for their training purposes, including being repeatedly winched for a one-man dinghy in the North Sea at night. two passes, time permitting, by the Sea King, a stalwart of RAF service, entering service with the RAF in 1977. It had been in Royal Navy usage since 1969, powered by two Rolls-Royce Gnome turbo shafts, which give a maximum speed of about 125 knots. Of course, this type developed...
and the classic aircraft trust, the Gloucester Meteor T7. against that blue sky. And doing about 400 knots there as he pulls up. For Airbus, uh, the double-decker, right down to parasol-winged microlights. A man with a passion for aviation, and he describes the meteor to fly as being a real honey. And this from the RAF's first operational jet fighter. It was the RAF's and the Allies' first operational jet. The only Allied jet to see World War II service coming into service with number 616 Squadron in July 1944. It was. They used these for the for the old doodle bugs. So the, towards the end of the war, when the Germans were sending these over to London in great numbers, this was the aircraft that was fast enough and could climb quick enough to go and catch them, upset them, and shoot them down. Yeah, that early uh, service included um, 13 downings of P1s. Apparently so. And, and it's interesting that in the classic aircraft trust, we have a baker's dozen of these heritable <laughs> old aircraft as well, of which this clearly is the star. The first prototype Meteor was powered by the Whittle-designed Rover built power jets W2B engines. Problems meant that the fifth prototype was actually the first to fly. That had Halford H1 engines. That was the unit later developed into the de Havilland Goblin, as used on the Vampire. But the Rolls-Royce Welland was the engine selected for the Meteor 1s. This one, however, powered as were most of the Meteor marks by the Rolls-Royce Derwent. Well, Meteor F4s set new outright world speed records in... Came onto the circuit, thanks in large part to the Meteor flight, who, whose dedication and, uh, and work brought it back into the air, along with Air Atlantic's technical expertise and money, um, was, in fact, Dan's honey. <laughs> and uh, so it'd be interesting to see if this grows on him in the same way. The first air-to-air -air kills of powered... Um, pi of piloted, I should say, aircraft by meteors occurred in the Korean War with the Royal Australian Air Force where number 77 Squadron took the type into combat. In the air-to-air -air role, the meteor was no match for the MiG-15 